Hey, what's going on, people? So I want to bring this video for all the new gun buyers out there who may have recently just purchased a handgun because they felt unsafe, you know, for everything that's going on right now. You know, and one is I can't blame you. Um, we know that the police are a little bit hesitant on responding to smaller things going on. You know, I've heard, you know, that uh, as far as shoplifting and things like that, uh, you know, maybe a car, you know, car theft, you know, they're slower to respond because they're worried about themselves getting uh, caught in this uh, coronavirus thing. And people want to protect themselves and protect their houses and protect their families, you know. So if you're one of those new gun purchases, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of advice. All right. Uh, first off, you know, if you want to watch some good videos, there's a guy out there called uh, Paul Harold, And I'll try to leave a link to his um, YouTube channel on there. Fantastic videos the guy does, you know, he's brutally honest on everything um, He doesn't try to swing it to which gun to purchase, you know He's not bought by any of the gun companies or anything. He just gives solid advice. He could be a little bit long toothed at times um, But other than that, you know, like he's got great videos on you know, which ammo is good He has like meat targets set up and things like that. So, you know, definitely I watch his videos all the time You know, I think they're very educational um and I definitely suggest, you know, you take a look at his channel and join his channel just for that main fact. You know, he, believe me, his channel is a, a million times bigger than mine. He doesn't need my help, but I just think it's a great channel that he has. Now, that being said, for you new gun owners out there, all right, don't let anybody tell you what gun is best for home defense and what gun is best for this. You know what the gun is best? The one that you have. You know, if you bought one already, you have it already. Okay, so make the best out of it. Don't let people push and tell you that gun is junk or whatever. Just make the best out of it. You know, you want to make sure you try to get some practice in. Know your handgun. All right. Make sure you definitely have it unloaded, you know, when you're playing around with it. You know, when you're going to play around with it. So make sure you take the magazine out if it has a magazine or you take any rounds out of, out of the cylinders um, if you have a revolver. So do that first. Okay. Um, always point it safe direction. All right. Know where you're pointing it, even though it's unloaded. Keep it in a safe direction because you never know when you just miss something in there. All right. That's another tip for you. The other thing I want to tell you is, you know, a lot of people don't say this. Like I personally don't keep a round in the chamber when I go to sleep at night. All right. Now, some guys argue with me. Oh, that's crazy. And this and that. And, you know, you're, you're going to be a couple seconds slower. Look, if I'm woken up in the middle of the night because I heard a bump in the, you know, down the hall or something like that. Now, I don't want to be reaching in the pitch dark in my bedroom for my handgun and accidentally pull the trigger and shoot myself, shoot the wall, shoot my wife, you know. So I don't keep one in the chamber, you know, just for that main fact, you know, when it's in my in my house on my nightstand. I keep my mind on the nightstand ready to go. So when I grab it, you know, while I'm awake, my eyes open up, that's when I rack it back now I'm ready to go. You know, and I'll go explore what the hell that noise was. Um, but that's my own personal thing. Do I recommend it? I do. I just said that same fact, but I just said, you don't want to be waking up all groggy eyed, reaching over your handgun and then accidentally pull the trigger on it as you're grabbing it because you can't see what the heck you're doing, you know, and your mind is still a little bit foggy, you know? So that's one thing I recommend to you. I don't have any kids in the house. You know, my, my two sons are grown up already. Uh, my stepsons are grown up. So everybody's out of the house, you know, so it's just me and the wife. So, you know, she knows don't touch the gun on, on top of the, uh, the uh, nightstand, you know, unless it's an emergency, and she has her own, you know, so she's set. And same thing with her, you know, we're both prepared, you know, just in case anything ever happens. Um, so you want to definitely look into that, you know, and look into that mindset. Now, if you have kids in the house, you're probably going to want to go with, you know, some kind of emergency safe procedure. Um, they have a lot of safes out there, you know, you can keep on your nightstand. That you can just touch it and it, it registers your fingerprints and... It opens up then, and this way you're able to grab it, so this way the kids aren't able to get to it, you know. So you definitely want to keep it safe away from the kids. All right? You don't want anything happening to them, you know, for a stupid reason why you're not home, they end up playing with it. Now, again, that being said, if you're going to purchase it, here's where it gets a little tricky. So if you're looking for something to defend your house, right, you're not going to be one of those people like us, like myself, you know, who carry, um, then you don't want to go with something too small. Okay, like this here, this is a Glock 43. Don't mind the trigger, that's an aftermarket. Um, this is the 43X, actually. This is kind of small, all right? Now, I know there's a lot of channels out there bragging about the P365, even about this, all right? This is kind of small for just home defense. And what I mean by that is it could be snappy. 
So when you're shooting this, and again, this is unloaded. Not that it's no matter. So when you're shooting this, okay, it tends to snap. All right, so unless you are more experienced or unless you're carrying it, you want to conceal it better, um, you might want to go with something a little bit bigger. You know, something at least with a three and a half, now this has a three and a half inch barrel on it. You want to go at least that, you know, in my opinion, um, so it's not quite as snappy. And part of the other reason is, well, when you go to the range or you go to the desert, wherever you want to go to go practice target shooting, you want to enjoy the experience. All right, I know, you know, if uh, I gave my wife the 365 to shoot, she would complain it was snappy. You know, I complained it was snappy when I shot it. So it took away the fun when I went to the range. You know, it bothered my hand when I, when I did it. You know, like I, I didn't want to put two, three hundred rounds to it, you know, because it started bothering me. That. So, but if you have something a little bit bigger, or a three and a half, four inch barrel, maybe even a five inch barrel, you know, which is getting a little bit too big in my own thoughts. Um, it makes it a lot more enjoyable experience, which means you're going to shoot more often and practice more often. Okay, so, and, you know, it's a little bit easier to control, to be honest with you. You know, if you have something that's, you know, four inch barrel, you know, it's a little more accurate, in my opinion, all right, because there's less snap to it, all right, um, and also it has a longer sight range. So these are some things to consider. Now, if you're going to be a person that's going to end up carrying, you live in one of our free states, you know, where you can... Um, get a concealed carry permit, or if you live in a state like Arizona, you don't really need the permit to carry, okay? Um, then you might want to go, you know, in that range, although they do allow outside the waistband um, holsters out here, you can open carry. Um, so in that case, you know, you can get, you can still carry a four inch barrel gun, you know, a four and a quarter inch barrel, you know, in 1911 because you're wearing an outside the waistband holster. So, you know, you don't care if anybody sees it or not. Um, at least I wouldn't care, you know, at that point. Um, so definitely things to consider if you're carrying, all right, stay in the three and a half to four inch barrel length. If you're not going to carry, you just want to put home defense, you know, um, de definitely, you know, go four, four and a quarter, maybe bigger. Um, it's just for the fact is that it would make it a lot more enjoyable experience for you. I know I'm kind of babbling all over the place, but I'm just trying to give you a little few tips. Now, when you go to the gun store, all right. Don't let them push just anything on you. Okay, these guys sometimes, they could be great guys, but there's some people out there, you know, that are pushing what they got a lot of, all right? They've also marked them up. There's a lot of people out there that are gouging like crazy, all right? I've seen guns that were going for $450, going for $600 right now, you know, because there's a shortage on it. The and everything got bought out. The manufacturers ran out, started revamping up, and the gun, gun stores are taking advantage of it. Unfortunately, now there's some great guys out there that didn't, you know, they might have jacked their prices up just a little bit for the fact of now the gun manufacturers themselves raised their prices a little bit. So they have to match that, which is understandable. I, I totally understand that. But again, when I seen something that five months ago was going $450 and somebody's trying to sell for $600, $700 now, I'm looking at them like, what are, you, what are you crazy? What are you trying to do to people? So keep these things in mind. All right. Um, look for something that you're comfortable with. And when you're in the gun store, you know, ask them if you can hold it and, you know, try to trigger on it. Of course, make sure it's empty. You know, make sure it feels good in your hand. You want to make sure when you get a grip on it, everything feels nice. When you pull that trigger, it feels nice, you know. Like, and I'll give you an example. This is the Glock 43X. I, I couldn't stand the damn trigger that was originally in here. It would gnaw on my finger, right? They had this serrated blade trigger. I, I hated it. I hated it. So I ended up changing out the trigger on it. You know, and there's a lot of people that say Glock is perfect. Glock is far from perfect. The only perfect thing about a Glock is that there are so many um, aftermarket accessories for it. That's the perfect thing. So you could change whatever you want, but you dump a lot of money into it to do it. Okay. It comes with shitty sights. I changed the sights on it. You know, something a little bit better for me. Um, but that's money I had to dump into it. So if you don't want to do things like that, you want to make sure you're comfortable with the gun you got. The sights look good to you. The trigger feels good to you, feels good in your hand, all right? Um, I personally say go with 9 millimeter. Uh, 9 millimeter is usually a more common round, even though right now it's scarce, but again, because people are buying it like crazy, like toilet paper. Um, and it's a little bit less expensive than 40, than 45, okay? So, and again, it's more common. Most stores carry it. Um, so you want to stick in that range if possible. And again, whatever makes you comfortable. I'm not recommending that you have to do this. This is all, you know, things that make you feel good about it. Um, 
again, don't let these guys push you into anything. You know, choose what you want to choose, spend what you want to spend, you know, have a, a budget in mind, do some research on it. Look up the prices online first. Check a couple of, di a couple of different stores online. You know, check Best Pro Shops. They're a little bit pricey. Okay, just to tell you, you know, unless they're running a sale on something, they're usually overpriced. Okay, Best Pro, because they have to pay for such a big overhead. Uh, same thing with Cabela's and, and the other big stores. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes the smaller gun shop is the place to go. You know, sometimes they do have a decent deal on it if they're not gouging. Okay. Um, those are just some of the things to look at. All right. And you want to definitely get yourself some practice ammo if you can find it. Uh, you know, some regular target ammo. Um, be careful, don't get gouged on that. You know, there was a place cheaper than dirt that was gouging for a thousand rounds of, of target ammo. They were charging eight, nine hundred dollars for, which is normally two hundred dollars. <throat> Ridiculous. They got busted on it and they got called out by a lot of the gun people out there. So I think they dropped the prices back down. But that's just a perfect example of price gouging. Um, <clears throat> after that, you want to get yourself some home defense rounds. I'm going to pull one out of my mag here so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right. So these are hollow points. All right. They're a little bit different. Now, why do you want to go with hollow points? And again, this is for the new gun owner. All right. Because these are supposed to break up within a certain amount of distance. So not to keep going further. All right. So a regular ammo, regular target ammo, all right, is what they call full metal jacket. That is going to keep penetrating until the momentum stops it. So this is supposed to break up after it hits something. It's supposed to start breaking up, you know, and eventually tearing apart. So what I'm getting at is, God forbid you have to shoot somebody, you know, usually a hollow point will stop inside that person. Whereas a full metal jacket might go through that person through the next wall you know, and maybe hit somebody that you love, you know, or keep going and go out that, you know, wall into the other wall and go outside, hit somebody else. So that's why you want to go with a hollow point, you know, because they're made to break up. You know, and that's, again, now when you buy these, you want to make sure you bring them to the range or wherever you're going to go practice and run a couple mags with these in it, just to make sure they work in your gun. Because that's another thing that people don't tell you is some handguns are picky about ammo. Right? And it might work in one handgun and it doesn't work good in another one. But it always get jammed up. You have a misfeed where it's sticking out, you know, and you don't want these problems when you need to, you know, not have the problem when a situation happens. So definitely, you know, again, if you have any questions, please, you know, just ask. You know, I'm here to help and try to hope everybody gets by this craziness that's going on. Um, give me a question below. No problem. I'll try to answer the best as I can. Also, like I said, check out uh, Paul Harrell's channel. I'll try to get a link in there for you. Um, definitely a hell of a lot more better at doing this than I am. So thank you, and I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Any questions, please ask. And subscribe if you like.